Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video, and there's lots to pack into this one. Um, I've just moved the alpacas down. They're here, reaching the little bits of tree. They love a bit of tree or a dead branch we've just done, scratch on the wall, etc. But I've moved them down because we're just going to move the cattle out of Front Park. They're going down another part of the farm. And in this video, I'm going to discuss quite a few things about that soil test we did with NRM Laboratories because I've had a visit from um, Terra Vesta, who are Macanthus grass specialists. They're issuing contracts around the UK for growing Macanthus grass, which is a huge, great grass that um, potentially is used for combustion for power stations, etc., and all, all sorts of other uses. I'll explain more. We'll go and visit the fields I'm, I'm contemplating putting into Macanthus. Um, there was, before we get on with the grain harvest, we've actually done the grass harvest, if you like, the silage being done um, on the farm. I'll show you how details of that as well. Another grumble about um, UK media misrepresenting facts uh, on beef production and um, some other things that are going on the farm as well. So first thing, we've got to move these cattle because they've got to uh, come out of front park and move down to where we cut the silage. We've had a right old game with the cattle over the last few weeks. Um, the post and rail in this, in this field has in, been in better nick and we just can't get the fencing repaired at the moment. Every farmer is after fencing uh, being done. And uh, yeah, there's no materials, there's no labor. And yeah, if anybody out there fancies doing a lot of fencing, give me a call, get in touch. Because um, yeah, they're out of here last night. They just, I mean, the bull is so big, he just leans against a post rail fence and it, a rail drops off or the little calves sort of have party time. They're like teenagers in the evenings and um, they go charging through a fence as well and then the mum wants to get out to the calf and oh dear anyway it's all good fun love having them in the front part because they look fantastic but uh, they have eaten if you look at the grass they've sort of eaten it off there's a few stalks not interested in eating the stalks it's the bulk underneath that we need right let's get these calves in come on go on there we go. That's the way. Right. Yeah, you can see the calves think that this is just playtime. Here we go. Mind my wall. Don't you knock my wall down. Please don't go over that. Excellent. Excellent. There we go. More trees. <laughs> Snacking. Well, that all went fairly well. Um, there they are. Now, that field, I looked mowing, that is where we were cutting the silage um, just a few days ago. And it's been a mega crop of grass. Everybody, you've probably noticed from your lawns, grass has really enjoyed the wet May um, and they got a, a quite a lot of bales, 80 some bales off that field. Um, the thing when you're doing round bales, basically you mow it, leave it a, a day and then row it up and then you come in with a baler. We're using a round baler because it's easier to handle and uh, wrapping it back at the yard. And the thing with a round baler is you don't jettison the bale on a slope. And uh, this is well known practice in farmer land because it will then roll down a slope and go through fences and hit people and cars or you know, you'll aim at wherever you've parked your car and the bale will hit it. You never get this recorded on camera, but I managed to record a bale coming out of a baler and rolling down that hill. And it was sort of coming at me at one point. When it goes like a Catherine wheels, this little grass spins off, but I was very pleased to capture it. Those bales are then collected. They've gone off to the home farm and have been wrapped. And they cut it for silage because it's just quicker. You've got to, you don't need such a bigger sort of dry window of weather. Um, if you're making hay, you have to leave it down, turn it, dry it to a certain moisture, bale it up, and you're just at risk 
of a rain shower coming on and spoiling your hay. So in the UK, generally, we use silage or haylage, which is sort of in between. So you bale all the grass up and then you take it back to the yard and just ensile it. So you wrap, sort of like a black cling film around the bales, that's in silage. So the time you're feeding it in the winter, it's just like silage, like out of a silage clamp. And it has the sugars, it's sort of slightly fermented and uh, keeps all the nutrients in there without sort of rotting. That's why you ensile it and put the plastic around it. Just a little lecture again on uh, UK beef and sustainability and climate change. I was reading today, yet again in the Sunday Times, how awful um, beef is in the UK and how much CO2 is released. For goodness sake, journalists, it's lazy journalism. Look at how beef is produced in the UK, how much is produced from pure grass-fed beef. These animals will now eat that silage over the winter. No fertiliser involved, no concentrates, no extra uh, to finish them off or anything. Purely grass-fed beef. And that is a biogenic cycle for ruminants and over a 12-year period Yes, they produce methane, but that's only being produced from the CO2 that the grass has absorbed from the atmosphere. Over 12 years, it's carbon neutral. Do your homework, journalists, and don't keep reporting that how awful red meat is without actually investigating the different methods of producing the red meat, especially in the UK and Ireland. Right, let's over. This area here is the, um, the permanent grassland. I just brought you down here because I, I have a great app on my phone it's called Picture This, and you can go up to any flower you um, want to look at, and you want the name of it, and it will tell you, just does a photograph, downloads, and this little patch here I'm quite proud of. Again, this grass and has never had any fertilizer, no treatments for decades, and I have orchids growing. So these are called Heath Spotted Orchid. And I don't know, I'm just quite excited that they're, they're here. There's other, all sorts of other things here. Um, common bird's foot, I don't, you know, these, these ones, the little colours looks like mini gorse or something, the flower. Obviously this is clover and stuff. But it's a great app when you're out and about and you spot a grass or a flower and you're not quite sure as it is, this picture this on your phone, does a picture, tells you all about it and it seems to get it bang on every time. Right. Let's leave the grass. I want to show you, I want to start talking about macanthus grass, carbon and all that sort of thing. Right, so this field is called Big Picket. And Big Picket uh, has a high clay content in the soil, which from a farming point of view is sort of good and bad news. It's bad news because it's hard to make a seedbed with this soil when you want to put a winter crop in. It's sort of lumpy, doesn't break down. But if you do get a good seedbed and plant it, well then it's fairly drought resistant and grows a reasonable crop. It's a bit hit and miss, very different soil to the rest of the farm. And it carries on into that field as well, next door, middle ground. And this is actually where I thought, well, I wonder if we could have the solar park. It's always fascinated me that a farm, we grow food, but could we actually be an energy farm? Could we actually grow energy? Because the world's going to need, well, UK is going to need a lot more energy as the years rattle on, with the electric uh, car revolution, etc. And uh, I looked at this solar park, these are the three fields I looked at solar park, had a uh, fight planners didn't get through, on appeal etc, so five, six years. So back to the drawing board and back in 2004 I actually looked at Macanthus grass as a potential for um, Didcot power station and then Didcot so said no we don't actually want to grow it locally we can just buy waste product from around the world they don't care about the miles we're bringing in the waste product all they care about is we're burning waste product so that went by the by but now i've just had this other look at um macanthus grass for these three fields it'd be about 24 hectares so 60 acres or thereabouts um and Terra Vesta, as I say, visited um, last week to discuss the potential and what they uh, are up to with Macanthus grass. They've got about 6,500 hectares of it planted in the UK already. And it's a fascinating crop, Macanthus grass, because it, it, it bulks, it, it's the most bulk you can get per hectare of dry matter. And it's a rhizome, so you put it in the soil and then you don't, touch it you don't have to put fertilizer on it's so rampant you're not really using herbicides because it swamps all out it grows it's like sugarcane or grows sort of eight foot tall by the end of the season and then you harvest it by putting a forest harvester in in about march it senesces off like grass or wheat does 
Um, you cut it in March when the ground conditions allow, um, leave it on the ground, it dries out some more, the, the actual moisture content is important. And once it's dry enough to bale, that's what you're going to do, you go and bale it. And Terra Vesta, 95% of the um, macanthus grass in the UK goes for what they term combustion, for burning, to produce energy, power, electric. Um, and I was surprised, I thought there were other uses for it. You've heard of IKEA making board out of it and that sort of thing. We go to the car, I've got a few more details. But it's, it's just a really interesting um, potential with it because it, um, secret state so much carbon dioxide it absorbs so much carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and that is what we're all farming now I'd had that test by NRM laboratories so the carbon test of the soil and we are now in a position as farmers where suddenly we used to just worry about varieties and things but because so many people want to offset their carbon um, emissions farmers are now being rewarded for locking up carbon how can we increase the amount of um, carbon absorbed by our farming practices? And there are several ways of doing it. Farmers Weekly has just done an article I was reading there. So for each ton of carbon dioxide sequestrated per hectare, you might get 30, 40 pounds a year. And suddenly, hang on a minute, I'm not farming, this is um, Skyfall for milling. I'm very interested in how much carbon I'm absorbing by this wheat crop. Can I minimise, um, can I put cover crops on? Can I minimise the cultivations? Can I increase the carbon content of the soil? And that's why I had that soil um, test done. And that is a bit like, it was explained to me, it's a bit, this is a carbon audit we did. What's interesting with soil organic carbon is it's highest in the permanent pasture. You're almost locked up as much as you can. But in the crops where we've taken the straw off for a number of years, potential to double that, the amount of carbon in the soil, and I'm going to get paid by a company that wants to offset its carbon emissions to do it. Hang on, this is a different sort of farming completely. But returning to macanthus grass, that absorbs 26 tonnes of CO2 a year per hectare. 26 tonnes, huge amount. It does also lock away 3.05 tonnes per hectare in the ground, just the root system of the macanthus grass. So then you bale it all up and you send it to the power station and four and a half thousand kilowatt hours of energy are released for each tonne of macanthus grass you burn. Significant amount of energy. And if I put this 24 hectares in, it would produce about 1.3 gigawatt hours of energy a year. Lots of numbers. But I find that really interesting because against the solar park on the same hectareage, that was going to produce 10. So it's only producing one eighth of the power generation, um, growing macanthus grass with all the bulk, all the bales on the farm and then all the trucks then move in it. The plus side is there's no planning permission needed, I can just get on and do it. But with this being paid to offset carbon, I might end up with just growing the campus grass, chopping it and then claiming back money for absorbing that much of CO2. All sorts of things going on in this area uh, of farming, um, really developing very quickly and it's DEFRA who are getting involved with this because there's a panic on in government, I am told, not being discussed in public, but if they do rush towards renewables, as in solar and wind, they are getting increasingly reliant on gas to smooth out the power flow, the generation. So they are very keen on macanthus grass as this way of burning carbon neutral because it's all the bulk has come from absorbing all that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and then burning that is effectively no more emissions because the carbon dioxide that's released by the burning is then absorbed by the macanthus grass. So DEFRA are getting very interested in it. Terra Vesta are predicting they, they put in 600 hectares in 2021. They're aiming at 1200 hectares in 22. They want to see that up to 15,000 hectares of macanthus grass being established by 2026. Massive in, uh, increase in the amount of macanthus grass being grown in the UK purely for power generation to smooth out 
if we move to renewables to smooth out the power generation they can rely on uh, burning macanthus grass to produce that power. Straw was looked at but it's unreliable compared to macanthus grass. As a grower I like macanthus grass because I'll plant it it's expensive to plant. It's like um, vegetable planting vegetables or sets. You sit on the back of a tree and you put the rhizomes in the soil. You've got two years to wait to get a, um, an actual crop, and it's quite uh, the sea. You know the rhizomes are expensive. So you've got about two thousand pounds a hectare cost to actually establish it. Two years of no income, and then you're then selling um, straw after your two years, and you get a contract for fifteen years. Um, to supply the straw because the power generators are so keen on doing it. What I don't like about it on this farm is the nearest power station I'd be supplying is in Sleaford, quite a long way, it's in Lincolnshire. I'd rather be um, supplying a more local uh, consumer of Macanthus, and especially so because you get paid on delivered price. So it's the fixed price, £75, index link going forward. But if you're further away from where the power station is, your net return on the farm is less. So I'd quite like a supplier um, to supply someone closer. So there you go, just a different sort of farming to look at. Who would have thought we'd be worrying about farming carbon and how we're going to lock it up? I suppose the writer's on the wall. We're still waiting for this ELM to come out, but that's what's worrying us on the farm now. Cropping being decided by how much carbon the crops are absorbing. Completely different sort of farming than I was studying when I was at college back in the 80s. I hope you enjoyed this video of Harry's farm, a different sort of look on the farm. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.